Hi, I'm Ron from the Faux School in Frederick, Maryland, where I teach decorative painting workshops. But today I'm going to show you a technique using the Toscano Red Venetian Plaster and our Black Italian Polishing Wax. Let's get our tools, let's get our materials, and let's get started. So the first thing I've done to get ready for the Toscano finish is apply a base coat. So in this case today I use the Quartz Primer. It's an interior exterior primer. Uh, you tint it with pigment, never paint. Pigment are just highly concentrated colorants that get you the color quicker and truer. If you try to tint the quartz primer with paint, you're going to break it down and it's going to fail. Um, interior exterior tints with pigment, cleans up with soap and water, and I rolled this on with a 3 8 inch nap roller because I didn't want a lot of roller stipple or roller texture. Um, because the Toscano can just go right over anything. Um, as long as, you know, but whatever is underneath is going to telegraph through the Toscano. Pretty simple. Tools. Stainless steel Venetian trowel, stainless steel Venetian spatula. High quality stainless steel means less carbon, less chance of leaving blackish blue marks on the surface. The Toscano plaster, interior only, cleans up with soap and water, tints with pigment, never paint. Comes in several base colors, red, green, blue, yellow, and tint base. Today I'm just going to use the red straight out of the can. If that's my ceiling, I'm going to go across my ceiling like so. This goes on pretty thin. You can hear it scraping the quartz primer underneath. So I'm not piling it on in an illusion to trick you to think I'm putting on very, very thick. Probably about a sixteenth of an inch, honestly. And I always work wet to dry. Because if you go dry to wet, I don't have enough plaster. That red line now is there till the end. This is like building a foundation with these plasters. Whatever happens underneath comes all the way through. So you got to be careful. Sloppy foundation, or crooked foundation, crooked walls, crooked roof, crooked house, and the house comes tumbling down. Okay, I'm just going to finish this out. I'm going to do 100% coverage. And I'm not doing this kind of stuff because there's no way you're going to do that all day after a whole wall. Your arm's going to, this is going to, your wrist is going to fall to pieces. Okay. And because it's an acrylic, I can work over a styrene sample board. I don't have to worry about it becoming brittle and losing its adhesion. Okay. Let's give it some simple movement. And there we go. All right, we're going to let this dry 100% because acrylic plasters have to dry 100% in order to go over top of them with the next layer. So, we'll see you when this dries. First coat's dry, let's continue on with the second coat. We're going to do that just the same way we did the first coat for this finish. 100% coverage, nice, simple, clean movement, nothing crazy. The ceiling, sidewall, okay. And to just finish out with a nice organic movement. Remember, no, no patterns. You don't want to create any hard lines when you're, you don't want to come this way or this way. All that stuff's going to telegraph through when you go to burnish and you're going to have a mess. Okay, it sounds like I got to tighten this easel up. All right, almost. So then what we're going to do is after we finish this quick coat, we'll burnish it, and then wax time. And today, we're going to play with the black wax. Okay, let's let this dry. We'll be back in just a little bit. Okay, so we're right in that perfect stage where we can burnish the plaster. Burnish, we're going to apply pressure, light pressure to compress the plaster, and by doing that, it's going to reflect more light, and the t movement or interest will start to come to life. Now, you don't need to muscle this. You just need a nice, firm pressure. You don't have to get crazy. Okay, let's see. There we go. Ah, I was going to pull it up so you could see it, but she's giving me a little bit of a fit with this tape all over the place. Here. 
Can you see the shine that way? There you go. Yep, see that shine? Nice. Okay, we're gonna let it dry 100% and then play with some wax. All right, the plaster's dry, so what we're gonna do now to start with is I'm gonna put a coat of clear wax on because the black wax to follow is very intense and it'll, this plaster is very dry, it's thirsty, it's like from moisture. So by putting the uh, clear wax on first, it can act like a little moisturizer, seal the surface up and prevent the black wax from actually going in too fast, too, mu too strong, too quickly and overpowering the finish. So this will act like a slip coat, like a protective layer that'll give us time to manipulate the black wax and we can control it and it can't control us. So this is just the Italian polishing wax clear from the factory. No, nothing's been done to it. Crystal clear. Interior, exterior, clean your tools up with some mineral spirits. It'll wash off your hands with soap and water. So we got there's 100% coverage with the wax. Make sure I got it down here. The sample board's curling up, giving me some issues. Somebody held the hair dryer down there a little bit too long and melted the board. All right, that's it for that. So we need this to dry. Hmm, looks like it's actually, I did a pretty good tight coat. It might be dry already. So let's see here. Sure is. All right. Lint-free, color-free rags because the wax could pull color out of an old t-shirt. You don't want that because then it'll discolor your finish. So it just goes over just like that. Polish it right up. All right, I'm going to get the black wax. I'll be right back. Okay, so here we go. There's our polished wax. See the sheen we get off of that? So now the next step, we're going to take the Italian polishing wax that comes in the black. So black is a standard color. And we're going to go over top of this and give it some interest and totally change the look. I didn't clean my trowel all the way. So let's start up here in the top corner. And just start troweling it on. When you trowel it on, you have a little bit more control, I think. And I can get a little more interest. If you try to rag it on, you're more like scrubbing it. But the trowel lets the wax go into those little divots or the crevices, or the low spots and skim across the high spot so it looks like it has a lot of texture to it. And there's no texture to this at all. And you can always, let's see if I didn't have that clear wax under there, this would just suck in there and we'd have a mess on our hands. This is a strong, strong color. You gotta be real careful with it. And we have to let this dry. I could always come back if I wanted to and add some more in areas. Just can't put it on too thick or else it'll cause issues. Well, you know, the, the discoloration, the gray, the hazing, the fine lines. You gotta be careful of this kind of stuff too. See these lines? That's where the wax on the edge of my trowel hit right in there. You gotta be careful because, if, like I said, if there wasn't that clear wax under there to, to help us, that would be a mess and we'd have, we'd have a time fighting that, no question about it. So you can just keep coming back, adding more here, adding more there. It's, it's up to you. You just can't add too much too quick. That's why you were kind of work in layers. Put this on, polish it up, and then um, you'd add more. Okay. Wax is dry, polished it up. You can start to see that luster. So what I'm going to do is hopefully I'll stop polishing because it just gets so shiny. All right, I'm going to pull my tape. Pull my tape, come back, show you the finished product. See you in a second. Okay, there it is, the finished product. I got to clean up the board a little bit. Had some bleeding issues with color under the tape. But look at this. Look at that shine. All right. Come here, you. 
looks like a fish. So look at that. There I am. Hello. Maybe this way. Yeah. You get the idea. It was over this way. It was better. Okay. And look at this cool pattern. All that fun interest. So it looks like a super textured wall. But it's smooth as can be. That'd be a fun accent wall. Great home theater, wine cellar. Anywhere you want to use red and black. That's it. Pretty simple, pretty cool. It's a Toscano plaster with a black wax. All right. Thanks for watching. My name is Ron Lehman. I'm from the Faux School, where I teach decorative painting workshops. If you get a chance, go to the website, thefauxschool.com. You can find all my classes there. You can find out information about hiring me to do a commission project. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them below. I'll do my best to answer them as quickly as I possibly can. Well, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.